We are episode 15. Episode 15. 15. Is it? 15. Yeah. 15, I think, yeah. I'm Terry Burgett, your host. This is my buttons man, Scott Haney. Oh, fuck. <laughs> All the way up there in Alaska, pressing his buttons to give you these amazing videos. It's a Tuesday. Oh it's the God. first of your two. It's the first of your two installments of the Real Talk. Terry's it on his own. Crackling. <laughs> what are we talking about tonight, then? I don't know. It's your show, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> don't be like that now, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you've got good news. What's your good news? Humbu. Lay it yes. out. Lay it out for us. So I had heard that they were tearing it down. There's rumors going around different things, um, but the strongest one that they were actually tearing it down. But it looks like it's not going to be torn down. Uh, Super Karate. Great website. Uh, I was pulling it up. Russian right website, isn't it? It is. Super Karate is Russia, yeah. It is Russian, but I still peruse it and just hit the uh, translate on it because they have great stuff. Anyway, mm. so they posted a thing um, on the 13th, um, basically correcting what they had uh, posted earlier about the reno uh, about the dismantling. Mm -hmm. They said that uh, uh, Kirstina Yama had reached out to them and uh, let them know there would be no demolition. The building was transferred to the management of business partners from such and such company. Um, we are glad that the information had been mismanaged that the building turned out to be unreliable. Anyway, long story short, the building is uh, going to be restored. Uh, so there's no date on the timing of the completion yet. Uh, but uh, Well, that's being, fantastic news. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can come along with me on my night mission to break in. <laughs> That's right. Well, I, I guess there, that won't be needed because it looks well, like hopefully. from this, um, I'm just flicking down through here. Um, I think from what I understood right now that the second floor dojo will remain open to training. Um, so size office, the mosaic area. Etc. will be uh, kept kind of like a like a museum type of thing. It should. I mean, it should be. It should be. Yeah. And this is. Um, we've talked about this before, right? Where, mm -hmm. you know, and and I don't care what we say. All the organisations today have ripped apart Oyama's legacy. Not looked after the family. They've ripped apart the legacy. Don't care what anyone says. Mm -hmm. That's what's happened. Um, the, you know, the, we have contact karate because of this man because of Sosa Oyama. Mm -hmm. He changed the way we do karate forever now. This, Absolutely. you know, that Hombu Dojo should be a mecca. It should be a museum. The, you know, you think, think in, in Sosa's office, how much stuff must he have accumulated? <laughs> how many books, how many gifts from all, you know, he was teaching the, the, the King of Jordan. What sort mm -hmm. of gift must he have left him? <laughs> And I think it should be preserved. If you go into the uh, the Budo shop in Tokyo, I know they've got a, a bust of Sosai's fist. Um, Tell in, people like, a what big the Budo bat. shop is. I can't remember his name, but the Budo shop is uh, in Ikikaburo. And it's just a martial arts shop. Yeah. They used it's to... Very famous. Supply, yeah, he supplied uh, Sosai with all the stuff. Uh, there's other people that would know more about it than me. I've only been in there twice myself. Mm -hmm. um, and in there, they've got like the bust of Sorsai's fist in a big plaque with his one of one of his 10th down belts. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'm not sure if it's been cut or folded, but it's all in there. Uh, and it's like, you can look at it. And the, uh, the proprietor is like, you know, if you want to make a serious offer, and we are talking in the tens of thousands of pounds is for sale what's that in real money pounds <laughs> so like ten thousand pounds don't don't you have a pound there what's, no. what's on the back of your what's on the back of your coin on the back on the yeah. front or on the back on the obverse on the back depends which coin you look at it could be a beaver and it could be a loon on, on the other side uh, that lady that's in your country. 
of every one of your coins. Yes. Yeah. Remember your place. <laughs> before before we stepped in and helped you out, you were using like beaver pelts as currency. <laughs> <Now> we... <laughs> anyway, digressing again. So again, the Budo shop, fantastic place. It's got all the stuff in there. Yeah, so they have memorabilia from and stuff, right? From Sosai? Yeah. Yeah, all old books and things. Yeah. Um so look we were saying that this this the office, this the, should be the mecca for all Kyokushin people. The whole, the and we've spoken about itself. this before. Yeah. We spoke I spoke about it with Cameron. We spoke yeah. about it. If a group got together yeah. and formed a, you know, like a like a board or, or a conglomerate, could buy that building and turn it into a mecca. And have it as a, you know, if, if how good would it be if you went to Japan and it'd be like, do you want to book a slot in Hombu? Well, I think that's what's happening now. So it's been taken over. So I, I, from reading the article and it is translated, it looks like there's a company that's really, really close within walking distance there uh, mm-hmm. that has taken it over. And um, I guess in partnership with uh, Christina. Yeah. And the idea is to. Uh, reopen it now i don't know if that's going to be under uh christina's organization or kyokushin it can't uh, i I don't the the problem was um with christina of sort of uh international kyokushin organization sosai yeah um a lot of people found it very difficult to work with which is why a lot of people left and it kind of crumbled a bit i think i think she she can't run it as an organization, as a as, as I hope not. I I hope it, it's exactly like you say. It becomes this I, mecca, yeah, a I, museum. And I think if she runs it as an independent museum mm-hmm. dojo for hire, you could hire yeah. a slot in there, and then that way you could say, um, "All right, for for argument's sake, we're out there for a tournament, we're out there for something." And I say, "Right, Scott, I've booked a slot in Hombu, eleven to one." We're doing a session. Tell everyone, boom. And yeah, we're that's a, since he, Steve and I were we were always his place on Saturday for dinner. We were saying the exact same thing. Like it'd be incredible if like, you could just book was, a slot. Yeah, and... the ambience in it to exactly. be exactly. Imagine yeah, doing a and class I, I, or something there. <laughs> you've seen kick? You remember Kickboxer? Oh yeah. So it's always I always think about this as well when you train because I used to train the, up on the mountain out of the way or something, and you get oh, into yeah, that when you were oh, slamming uh, sheep in the I'm face. Trying to knock. Uh, yeah, in the face. Make sure it's the right way around slamming sheep. <laughs> just, 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 you know, make sure it's all above board. Everyone yes. knows what's going on. I don't want any town bites. You know the rumors that people the around where Terry's from. <laughs> what was what was I even saying? I can't remember. <laughs> what was we on about? Uh, renting Hombu. No, we've gone on from. See, you fucked it up now. You fucked my train of thought up. Talking about sheep. Oh, you're a kickboxer. The movie. You're oh, a... yeah, the, the, the film <laughs> Kickboxer. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. So I always think when you, you train and you get into that zone a bit, and, and like you can hear the eagles, and you're like, you listen to the, listen for the eagle. And I find from so that kickboxer, you know, when he's training in the shrine. And they're mm-hmm. like, this is a special. And he starts to year the eagles and he years old wars and stuff going on. That's what it would be like. I bet that's what it would be like in Hombu. Mm-hmm. If you get into that zone, you get into your little war, you start training and sweating. And you're like, I can hear the old man shouting. I can hear it. I can feel it. I, I bet you would. I bet there's a lot of uh, wrapped in quotes, ghost in that place. Yeah, you know, I bet. Energy, I mean. Yeah, 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 it is. And it is. And we were talking about this before. Energy, it leaves imprints. It's oh, gonna yeah. Be there. You know it's the craziest story I ever, one of the craziest stories of, uh, sorry, a sidetrack, but it just reminds me of this. This is years ago. Um, I think it was in Florida. There was a, a condominium, uh, apartment building, whatever. And people that were living there were complaining that they, it was haunted that they could, we were hearing kids, like kids laughing, crying and running and stuff. And they couldn't figure it out. So they did a little history on the place and the place used to be a school, but the, none of the kids are dead. All the kids are, they've grown up and stuff. Now <laughs> they just converted it into this condo. Isn't that bizarre? So crazy things it is. It's possible They you know, kids are so energetic that they could leave some sort of energy finger right energy. there. Energy so Hombu, yeah, there's be. a lot of energy flowing through that through through that building. I bet you. Yeah, 
It is. And we're on, we're on. We're talking about Japan tonight. So the theme of tonight mm. will be on Japan. Have you been out to Japan? No, it's. I've actually have one. <laughs> speaking of pandemics and stuff, so I was booked to go. I was going to spend a month there years ago. Uh, oh, I remember you saying you were going to train with uh, Kazumi. Yeah, I think this was the trip. No, no, there was no. It was before that, and the first time I was booked in and uh, uh SARS hit not SARS yeah was, SAR, was it SARS back then no what was it called swine flu no I don't know one of them hit and uh and uh, anyway it was all canceled so it sucked uh but then later yeah I, I got invited to go um I was gonna stay with Kazumi yeah I was gonna train yeah, at yeah. his uh, dojo. I remember you saying yeah and then life and stuff got in the way it does life gets in the way I mean I was supposed to be going out uh, last year of March, it was happening. I was going out for this So Kyokushin World Tournament, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I was going out to, and I was going to meet Oishi, and we were going to have a chat about things and stuff. Um, what this things? pandemic hit? Things, things, organizational things. Interesting. So yeah, we were we were going to have a chat about it, and and things were happening, and I was going out with Cameron, um, mm. but then all this crap hit. So mm. I've been out twice to japan once in 2003 okay. when i fought in the eighth world tournament i think it was the eighth what you fought in the eighth world tournament yeah i didn't know that was the seven are you being yeah. serious no yeah, of course i fought in the world tournament i didn't i didn't know that <laughs> i don't think i did i'm sure we've spoken about this i don't know how that i'm old man i must just you've got oh, a good wow. memory it just you doesn't just last long. <laughs> it just doesn't last long. Uh, yeah, I thought the, the uh, two. It was it was two thousand and three. So what was that? Is that the seventh or the eighth? I think it's the eighth. I think it's the eighth. Who won that one? It's the other oh, Tony. Kiyama. Kiyama. I think it's the eighth. Anyway, it was sure it's the eighth. Eighth world yeah. tournament. Yeah. So I fought in the eighth world tournament. Um. So that was the first time I went to Japan. Wait, so, how did you, know, you do? I lost to Mikoshiba. In the first round so i fought a japanese guy um a lot bigger than me he was i think he was 88 kilos i was 72 kilos mm -hmm. i was i was 22 he was 29 so he's a bit older a bit bigger more experienced but i mean mm -hmm. that that doesn't matter really because whatever man what an experience I, I tell you, yeah it is and, and if you know, as we look back on it, if we're honest, if I had fought my fight like mm. I used to fight, like, like I, sh like I should have been face? fighting, yeah. <laughs> I definitely would have won if I'd knocked him out. Um, but I, I, th he wasn't anything special. I didn't get beaten. I just, mm. as, as you know, in the World Tournament, if you don't do anything, it well, if you don't visibly hurt the Japanese fighter, it just automatically goes yeah. to them. Yeah. So we fought, and I didn't do a lot. I didn't get dropped. I didn't get battered. But I was like, because by the time I got on the mat, I was completely emotionally drained, and I didn't want to do it. I was Why? just what like, do you mean? well, we so we trip out to Japan. I was twenty two. Yeah, fighting in the World Tournament. It's like yeah, it's this overwhelming. is. This and and this the IKO World Tournament. Mm -hmm. This is like this is it. This the is Mecca. this is the, the yeah. This this you can't go any higher in competition. Mm -hmm. Um. So I was the only fighter from Great Britain going out, and uh, so I was on my own. Whoa! I went. That's overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. So I was twenty-two. You're a kid going out on my own. Yeah, I was a kid who, going out. Your on my own. Which coach went with? Who went with you? Gary. Shan okay. Gary came yeah, out yeah. with me. Yeah. Um. So, and again, in the run-up for it, I'd given up my job, mm -hmm. and I was training full-time, but my training didn't involve a lot of sparring, because there was no one to fight, really. Mm -hmm. So the majority of my, because there, no there was no one here for me to spar, so the majority of my training was bag work, fitness work, and running up in the mountains. Mm -hmm. That was my training for the tournament. So I was super fit, no, no problems with the fitness side of it, the yeah, strength side you. of it. Everything was on point. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I was a kid. So we went out there, and this is, you know... Fuck what was me. that like, landing there? Completely over... You know, it's... And again, I was out there with with the entourage of all the Xi'ans, you know. Uh, all the top British Xi'ans were there and everything. And I'm, you know, being dragged along with them. So the 
the the decisions are very much what they make. You know, you've mm-hmm. got Shan Clarinino was the the head there. We wherever he wanted to go, that's where we went. Mm-hmm. So we were traveling around. I'm taking it all in. Um, we go to the Tokyo Gymnasium. Uh, so there was this was back when it was it was over three days. No, over, yeah, over three days. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we basically go there. You've got a huge, massive, huge stadium. And then downstairs, you've got the fighters room where all the fighters are from every country. You're all downstairs underground, warming up mm-hmm. and doing your stuff and whatever. So mm-hmm. we arrive there at about 7.30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. So we're there to get signed in, weighed in, checked in, all of this and that. Um, I don't know when we were going to fight. I had no idea when we were fighting yet. Why? Uh, I was number... Uh, you just didn't have any idea. Did, I, yeah. I was number two. Uh, okay. No, we didn't. We didn't have any idea of when I was fighting. Mm-hmm. Uh, just we had to be there and be ready. So I was number two two eight, uh, and I suppose really, if we had, we because again, everyone was a bit excited. Um, Gary was there, you know, sort of looking after me. But it was the first time he'd been back to Japan for like thirty odd years. Mm-hmm. You know, he was there in the seventies. So again, it was all it was all overwhelming for him as well. So we just didn't know when I was fighting, what was going on. So I, you can imagine now, from being there seven thirty in the day, and seeing you know Filio Francisco was there, Glauber Fitosa, Emil Costa, all these people that I read about uh, and and are my heroes, and now stood in front of them all, and it's like, whoa, this is a really big thing. And I'm I'm nervous energy anyway. I'm I'm hyper all the time. You wouldn't think it, but I am. So I'm like a bottle of pop all day. And I didn't actually fight until about seven in the evening. So I'd been on the go all day, just like a bottle of pop, revving up and then calming back down and then revving up, calming back down. Um, so by the time they called, so you, you went up onto the top mm-hmm. where the fight is on the mat and you had three chairs opposite corners. So there was always the fighters, then there was the next fighters, the next fighters and the next fighters all ready to go. So you'll be stood on the third chair. So you're like, right, it's going to be about 10 minutes before I get on. So mm-hmm. you're still trying to keep warm and, and do stuff. Then you go up a chair. So you're like, right, okay, it's coming, it's coming. And again, I had no entourage. I had no one around me to, 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 to pull me out of it, to say, chill, yeah, relax. No music, you know, didn't have listening or anything. Just, you see people now put their music on and boom, they're out of it until they're on the mat. Then they're in the fight. Mm-hmm. Get to the last chair. So you sat on the last chair now. Three minutes up on the clock. And of course, the stage is raised up. You're sat down on the side looking up at the fighters, looking up at all the people around. And you're like, right, start the sight gap. I'm going on. I'm next. I'm next. Three minutes up. Ikiwaki. Sit down another three minutes. Three minutes is a long fucking time. <laughs> sat back down, chilling. Minute left, right. Get get back in the game. I'm ready for it. Icky wacky. Right. <sighs> Sit back down for three minutes. Uh, so by the time I got to the mat, I was absolutely drained, just emotionally drained. I remember Gary saying to me, Come on, this is everything you've worked for now, Terry. This is you a moment. This is you a time. Yeah. And the, the last thing I said to him before I walked up on the mat was, I don't want to be you. <laughs> don't want to do it now i it's all it's completely all gone out of me now i don't want to do it yeah so i got up onto the mat and uh i fought miko shiba he was a solid guy and, and we moved around we kicked i was a lot faster than him throwing the punches in i tell you what i remember about the fight it, his punches didn't bother me at mm-hmm. all i he didn't I, he didn't really have, Catched me with any go hurt me or anything. But when I kicked him, I remember slamming a low kick into him mm-hmm. and catching him and thinking, fucking hell. That was like kicking a tree. <laughs> I remember feeling the pain in my shin after catching him. And I was like, fuck. Just the jab, the solid base. It is like kicking a tree. Their legs are. <laughs> so we've, we fought for the three minutes. Blah, 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 you know, nothing really happening. The footage, um, we'll put it in the, the comments, the yeah, link pin. to the footage. Because it's... Yeah. Because it's up there, it's out there. Um, and then I remember looking up the clock and there was about 20 seconds on the clock and I was like, 
I don't want to be back here tomorrow. I don't want to do this again at the moment. Just it, it all the heart had gone out of me. So I threw a half-hearted somersault rolling kick to land on the floor. And I can make that last for about 10 seconds while I'm getting back up, doing my belt. Oh, whistle's gone. <laughs> Let's get off the fucking mat. So... But I, often when I got off then, obviously, everyone was like, yeah, yeah, good, good, well done, well done. But I knew, I knew inside me that I didn't fight. Mm-hmm. All I did was go through the motions because I didn't want to be there. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards in the night, I was so depressed and so upset with myself that I'd given my job up. I trained full time three months to go to Japan. Mm-hmm. I was living like a fucking, like a, a pauper, like a monk. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I had no income or something. I was training. I, I'd go and meet Gary at this house. He'd cook me breakfast. Then we'd go up in the beacons. We'd be running. Then we'd come back. We'd be in the dojo training, jumping sets, whatever. He'd cook me dinner because I couldn't afford to pay for dinner. Mm-hmm. So, you know, everything that had gone into it. And I was like, fucking threw it away because I felt I could have beaten my opponent and if I'd beaten him he actually lost to Kiyama on day three so he went to the final 32 uh, and I felt I was a stronger fighter than him stronger as in hitting but uh, punching wise I was much stronger Mm -hmm. Um, so it was just kind of a all this effort all this time and I've thrown it away so it was quite an it was an emotional trip certainly for a young kid you know someone who's 22 this has been his dream to do it all his life. And now he's done it. It's, it's a stale taste. It's left a stale taste so in my mouth. What do you think happened? It was just, just overwhelming just, I, experience it was just, of it all? It was just, I could not switch off. Yeah. So all day, I was on the go. I could not switch off from it. So by the time the fight came, I was fucked. I was absolutely drained yeah. emotionally. Yeah. Not physically as stuff, but you know, nervous energy, nervous oh, energy God, all the yeah. time. Because I, I, I remember I'd be like, right, I'd be with, I remember there was a South African team and I'd start warming up with them and start banging the pads and boom, I'm going for it, boom, boom, boom. And then, right, we need to calm down again now because we're not on. <laughs> yeah, hurry Let's up. Calm and down. And then, yeah, in a couple of hours later, oh, start warming up again and getting, I just fucked at the end of the day then. Uh, and it really messed with my head. Uh, and, and I think, if I'd had someone because Gary was also doing his things as well he hadn't been there you know he, he was also grading for his fifth dan when he was there in Japan mm. eventually which he should have had like decades ago so so he was doing his own things as well and there was no one there that was just purely there to look after me and make yeah. sure I was alright so I was just that was it so really that the rest of the trip was a little bit oh, stale for me. Yeah, I was just going to ask, like, so how long more were you there after that? Uh, ten, 10 days or whatever. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I went to, did the Mitsumine camp afterwards and stuff. Right. So we started coming, I started coming around, but for a couple of days, I, don't know, I was quite miserable, quite depressed. Mm, in fact, it. so one of my, one of my biggest regrets in life, now that I look back on it, uh, so Takeshi Azuma, the founder of uh, Daido Juku mm-hmm. and Kudo, mm-hmm. he was of he was Gary's senpai in Hombu, oh. along with uh, Oishi. Oh, wow. So they they were his senpais when he was training, mm-hmm. and we met Azuma on the street, <laughs> just randomly to him. Well, yes, Japan. He was obviously obviously he'd been to the tournament, right. and we were walking down the street and. And bumped into him, and Gary was like, "Oh, I reckon that's what they were talking." And Asma was fucking. You could see his, he was still there. He was still stacked. So really? this was two thousand and three. His forearms were popping out, and uh, I remember they were talking and everything because, of course, they hadn't seen each other for like thirty odd years. Mm. So he invited us to his home that night for dinner, uh, and it was like, "Whoa, is this and that?" So Gary went, but I was like, "I don't want to go. I just want to leave me alone." In the hotel room, just feeling sorry for myself. Ugh. That's I just I just want a little bit of alone time, just for me, just uh, try and chill, get out of this depression sort of thing. Right. Um, and I t- so I didn't go. Gary went at a fantastic night, pictures together, you know, blah I blah bet blah. He did. <laughs> I didn't go, and that's one of my life regrets. Yeah. 
is not doing that. Because you think now we could have a conversation saying like, well, yeah, actually, I know Azumaya, I went to his house, had dinner with him and his yeah, family. Can imagine. Here's the pictures. <laughs> so after thing, afterwards, things started, I started to come out of it a little bit. And then we went to Mitsumine, the winter mm. camp. Yeah. Uh, that was that was amazing. Of course, you know, there was loads of people there. It's about a, about a four hour bus drive, I think, from Ekikaburu up to the mountains where we went. So we go there, we get checked in, signed in. We got proper uh, little Japanese room, tatami rooms. Your your beds are, excuse me, all put away. You bring out your futon and your blanket every night. So you have a tatami, you have a mat. So it's a six mm. mat room would be for six people to sleep in. Mm. Little table and stuff. So we slept in there. I met a lot of people there. We were talking, but again, still young, you know, only... Yeah. 20 you know i i'm That's too young to yeah it is and, and like you're too young to formulate things yourself you just kind of like oh you know in the ambience trying to soak it all up i met uh shian ken newton Gbard there at mm-hmm. the winter camp mm-hmm. he's a, a larger than life he's a legend in kyokushin mm-hmm. and we were the problem i had in japan all the because you imagine how many was i say that to be about 300 people there would be about 300 people at Mitsumine uh, and in the shrine. So you had all the tables we set up. We'd all be sat on the floor in like Yukata house kimonos. Uh, sat there waiting for everyone to sit down. So the food was always stone cold. And I, and I like I like hot food and cold drinks. Mm-hmm. And it was the opposite in Japan. The food was stone cold and all the drinks were hot. <laughs> so I struggled food-wise out there. And you know, some sort of fish. And I'm like... I can't, don't know if I can eat this. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, she and we have the wasabi, the green mm. wasabi paste. Oh. Of course, I don't know what that is. <laughs> and I remember, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I sat opposite she and Kenny, and he was saying like, oh, that's uh, that's for real men. That is the real men. And we were like, oh, us. We, you know, we are cooked in. He said, "Oh, the bigger, the bigger the dollar you are, the more of a, the more of a man you are." Yeah. So obviously, I'm, you know, Terry jumps in with angels' feet to tread. Right, I'll have a handful of that. <laughs> Eat that, swallow it down, oh, and then Jesus. he was chuckling to himself, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh, that's a bit." That's a bit fiery, that is. And then, obviously, you know, I'm like running around screaming, drinking water and stuff. But yeah, the, those memories, they I had some fantastic memories from there. Yeah. Uh, you know, we visit Saw Size Memorial. Mm. Uh, you know, we trained, trained up in Mitsumine in the mountain, mm-hmm. we trained in the yeah. shrine, in the temple. Yeah. And then we did the waterfall training. Mm-hmm. So we walked down the mountain. Uh, like the waterfall is nothing like. The waterfall we've got in wales that we do the misogi in january mm-hmm. it's like a little bit of a trickle coming over so and 300 people all trying to get under there <laughs> so you'd all take it in turn someone would stand take a picture take a picture mm-hmm. let me punch it <laughs> right i'm done let's go yeah and then back to the room and then we came back home and that was that that was the world tournament done for me I had some fantastic memories yeah, but it's still an amazing adventure it is an amazing, but it, it left a sour taste. Yeah. Because I, I, you know, just didn't handle it as well as I could have handled it. Well, I didn't fight like I should have fought. I didn't fight me. I didn't mm-hmm. fight my fight. I just mm-hmm. got up there and did enough not to look like a complete idiot, mm-hmm. but purposely didn't fight the fight. Mm-hmm. So it kind of it spoiled that trip for me, really. So we so that was two thousand and three. Um, I was asked again then in two thousand and seven if I wanted to fight again mm-hmm. uh, for Britain, mm-hmm. which really would have been my year. I was older. I would have been mm-hmm. twenty six then, mm-hmm. uh, and I would have been more mature. But I had no. Co- Gary had gone. He had moved by that point. He'd moved to France. So I mm-hmm. was very. I was the Ronin at that point right. on my own, and I and I thought. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to go out and fight again, but I don't. I can remember that pressure from the first time, and I was thinking, do I want? Do I want that? I, I, and I just, you know, I've obviously I'm running my own company at the same time, mm-hmm. and I was thinking, 
I don't want it. I don't mm-hmm. want that again. Because mm-hmm. um, again, I had no one. I had no support. I had no one around me to say, "I'll I'll train you. I'll help you get in shape for that." Well, you know, we, we'll go out together. I'll be your coach. Mm-hmm. I didn't have any of that, so I didn't fight. But but you did say, go like, back two, though. I did. I went back in two thousand and seven. Yeah. So two days before, like the flight, I was like. Shall I go or not? Again, I didn't have no I didn't have enough money mm. for it to be like a really enjoyable. It was going to be a shoestring trip. Mm-hmm. And I said to my ex-wife at the time, I was like, I, I think I'm going. I'm going to go to Japan. Oh, well, you know, whatever you think is right. And I'm like, put everything. And I just on the send key. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm going. Done. It's done. <laughs> So book the flight. The flight was like 500 quid or something. Um, booked in a nice little hotel, the, the Sakura Hotel, which is only like a 10-minute walk from the Metropole Hotel where all the fighters stay where they have the sayonara party and the main stuff. Mm-hmm. So I took my GB branch chief sort of suit out to the, you know, look the, the months look the nuts. Part. Looked the part, went out there. My mate, my good mate Jeff was out there with the Dutch team. So he was out there and it was a good, different experience because I was my own master. Mm-hmm. I could go where I want and I could do what I wanted to do. We went in, we watched the tournament. I was chatting to people and I wore my, my shirt, tie and suit every time I went there. Mm-hmm. So, and again, I'm, uh, I've got a lot of confidence wherever I go. It's like, <laughs> no, I should be you. I belong you. So yeah, I meant to be ringside. So you know, until someone <laughs> asks me to leave, I'm sat ringside for three days. Oh, fuck. So I was right. I was like, my seats were like, I don't even think they were in the gymnasium. They were like outside in a bus stop or something. My seat tickets were. Um, so I got in there and it was a much better experience. I sat there and I watched the fights. And so I nobody kicked you out? No one kicked me out until the last day. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so I've been sat here vigilantly watching and chatting to people and doing stuff for two whole days on the last day before the final fight, mm-hmm. um, which was tech mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, cause tech won that year. Yeah. So he came up for the final fight and like all these seats were empty where I was sat. And the only seats in front of me were the interpreter with the interpreters and the coaches mm-hmm. that were actually there. So I mm-hmm. couldn't get any closer. And I'm like, Oh, this is the final, this is it. And then some people come walking in and I'm like, oh, who the fuck are you now? Where have you been all day? It's only <laughs> Filio Francisco and his family. <laughs> <laughs> he comes in and I'm sat there and I'm like, all right, well, you know, what, up there, what do you want? The fight just happened then. <laughs> and they bring some of the Jap and then they're like, oh, can we look at your tickets? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I said, you know, you've seen my suit on my badge? So I showed him my ticket and he was like, yeah, you're, you were up there, way up there. And I was like, there's someone in my seat up there, so I can't sit up there. There's someone in my seat. And I was like, I'm, are they up there bowing? And getting, I'm like, the finals are on, it's happening. And like, they were like, you could get, you know, pushing me out of the seat. <laughs> um, and like all the entourage come in, but mm. then luckily... Uh, the, the, and I'll never forget her. It was fun. she was a Japanese woman, but she was living in Russia. So she was the Japanese Russian interpreter. Mm-hmm. I think she was married to a Russian Shian or something. She mm-hmm. was sat there, and she turned around and she could see what happened. And she knew that I'd been there for for two days. And she said, "Come sit next to me." Oh. So I went. I went in. Fr- I was sat on the mat virtually for the final. Wow. Sat next to the Russian interpreter because cool. it was. That was, I, nice was and it was like to do that. lovely to do that. Yeah, really nice. I know. I never. Uh, I thanked her obviously at the time, but I, I have no idea who it was. I just know she was a Japanese woman that yeah. was that lived in Russia and was doing the Russian interpreting. Very cool. So yeah, it was. So that. So that. It had righted it, so I had a much better time the second time that I went out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it's a special place, though. Special place, and the atmosphere is amazing. It's so vibrant. Mm. Wherever you walk uh, on the streets, you see west. You see kanjis. Uh, excuse me, kanjis everywhere. Mm. Os, 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 os. You don't walk. You don't walk a meter without us. 
us like, bowing to someone and, and showing us. What do you mean? Because the tournament was going on, there's so many people. Yeah, it was obviously yeah. yeah there was there was thousands yeah. and thousands of, of Westerners there as well. Yeah. Uh, so everybody, everyone is there walking around. You walk or your kanjis, you're us. Right. You you're bumping into uh, look like I met uh, the Canadian Shians at Bioway, but they they're more Bamfway. Yeah, uh, Stuart yeah. Conical, Stuart That's and right. Don, yeah. the brothers. So met them out there as well. You know, every, every whoever who's who in karate is there at the world tournament. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it is the network, and you get to meet people. is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So yeah, it was much much better out there. So we um, when things sort themselves out, we we need yeah, to get a trip I'm definitely out there. definitely going there. And Steve and I have been talking about it too. Um, and now, like I said over the weekend, with that news that the uh, Hombu is. Combo's opening. That's yeah. I mean, there's no time uh, limit on it or zone or whatever she didn't say, but it's uh, it's coming anyway. It's going to be great. It's going to yeah, be great. Be amazing. Um, and we will we'll go to Rapongi. Have you heard of Rapongi? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, we'll go to Rapongi, but we won't go out drinking in Rapongi. Mm-hmm. Why? We, I had a. Traumatic experience oh, happened Jesus, to me. There we go. I thought we were going to start whining. <laughs> well, let me tell. I'll tell you what happened in Rapongi because it's the. I had a great trip. This trip That's until the, I went to Rapongi. What's it? How do you describe it? Um, it's like it's like the I, almost like the red district. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was trying to come up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, lots, lots of uh, lots of foreigners go there, yeah. and there's bars and everything. Yeah. So, and it's about it's two train rides from Mikikabulu. Mm-hmm. But I was like, and I was supposed to be going out with my, my mate Jeff. And I was like, this, it was the last night in Japan, the flights in the morning. So I'm like, let's go out and do something. <laughs> he couldn't because he was with the, he had to be with the Dutch team because he went out with them. So I was like, oh, well, fuck off then. I go myself. So I went to Rapongi on my own. Took about, about 200 pound cash with me. Left my cards in the hotel room because I thought, it's kind of, it's that area as well mm-hmm. so went out there and yeah i was probably got there about six o'clock in the evening a couple of drinks and a bit of food but you know there's lots of westerners in there bumped into a group of british guys that were just like backpacking mm-hmm. in japan mm-hmm. talking to them and stuff so we was drinking more and drinking and drinking and i'm getting drunker and also then you know Karate. So not we think everyone in Japan does karate. Everyone in Japan knows about karate. Everyone does no. it. No, they don't. Some people no. haven't got a clue about it. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I and I'm I'm doing my you know the <laughs> you know the bottle break where oh, I hit yeah, the yeah, top yeah. on the bot. I'm yeah. doing this in bars all the time. Then people are like, oh, let me show you a trick. Fucking glass <laughs> everywhere over the bar and stuff. And <laughs> so we're getting more and more drunk. Um. And I ended up in this bar, and I was in a bar drinking, <laughs> and I was getting probably getting a bit leery. I know it's hard to believe, <laughs> hard to believe, but I was probably getting a bit leery and, and a bit chesty. I was being a dick, really. <laughs> I on. remember trying to trying to chat up some women and stuff, <laughs> and trying to do whatever. I remember, t- I remember distinctly remember two Russian women, and like I was still, you know, I was still cut then. I didn't that. I still had a six pack then in 2007 <laughs> and they were like, Oh, you're so muscly. muscly. And I'm like, yeah, I am. Yeah, <laughs> I am. And I remember them feeling my bum. And I was like, and I was <laughs> oh like, yeah, my God. I, tra- I train, I work out. So then they were like, well, they disappeared. And then when I went to pay for a drink at the bar, I went to get my money. And all my money was gone. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, I, and at that point, I remember thinking, they took my money out of my pocket. Because yeah. she was proper, like, playing with my bum and, oh, it's so tough, you're so big. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> robbed me, robbed me blind. There's a lesson <laughs> to all you kids out there. <laughs> yeah. So I, I've got no money, drunk in Rapongi. Uh, people are buying me drinks. Um, and I'm just getting drunker and drunker and a bit more rowdy and leery and stuff. And I have, uh, there's lots of blank spots of Rapongi that I can't remember. The next thing I remember, I'm I'm falling down some steps oh, onto geez. the street. Oh my god! This and is then, just going 
two policemen oh, are Jesus. walking me up the road and it's like it's starting to get a little bit light now and i'm oh thinking right God. fucking now we've got to get going then i got to get back um uh, <laughs> and uh, they take me to the train station and like i'm proper drunk at the moment now and i think i was spiked actually as well because afterwards i was really <laughs> ill so someone spiked my drink which is uh is the mo oh, in man. rapongi that's the thing that happens. Better, better. It is. It happens a lot in Rapongi. People Westerners get spiked mm. and then they get robbed. Mm. So I'm like, I, I I'm struggling to, you know, make sense of anything that's going on. They put me in the train station, um, and then I wake up later on, and I wake up. Oh my god, such a crick in my neck, and I'm thinking, fuck, you know, how long have I been here? I must have like must have fallen asleep for an hour or something and this getting light and i'm like i gotta get going it's getting light so i'm walking around the station and i, I can't make sense of anything so i go and jump in a taxi and in my b- very broken japanese i'm like Ekigaburo, thinking he obviously understands what i'm on about yeah <laughs> and it was a little old it was like a little old mr miyagi guy driving the taxi so i jump in the taxi he drives somewhere and then we're, we're at another train station and he wants 2,000 yen or whatever. And I'm like, no, no, no. You've done a circle and brought me back to the same train station. <laughs> I'm not, no, 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 I'm not paying anything. And then, and he was like, you know, you, you pay. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not oh, being fucked up. I, no way. And the fact I've got no money anyway. Oh, God. Because <laughs> I've been. <laughs> that's what I was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> So he, he's like, right, police box. We we'll go to police box. Mm-hmm. So and they and I'm like, I'm off. But I go to open the door and they pressure locked. So you mm-hmm. can't open them from in. So I'm like, right, okay. And he starts driving off. So in my my drunken spiked brain, I'm like, I'm being fucking kidnapped, Joe. <laughs> and they're gonna. I need to get out of this taxi because they're gonna sell my body parts on the black market. <laughs> Jesus. So I'm trying to I'm trying to climb into the front of the taxi. My I remember my leg is over the arm and I'm trying to get into the front and the, the Japanese guy is has got his hands crossed, which means no, and he's saying, Yeah, 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 no, no, go sit back down, sit down. And I'm like, I'm getting out of here. I'm trying to climb into the front of the car. He pulls into a police spot, a police station. He jumps out the car and I'm like, now's my chance to get out. So I <laughs> put the window, the car's locked, I put the window down. And I managed to, I'm just, I've got no control of my body. I can't focus on everything. It's blurry. And I climb out of the window and fall onto the floor. And as I look up, then there's two police officers there. So they take me into the police box and they're talking to me. And I'm like, look, I, I, I'm drunk. They probably see this all the time in Rapongi. Mm. Drunken, drunken daiji Westerners mm. come in here, messing things up. So I cut a, a long story. Should we get on the phone to the interpreter? I explain to them what's going on. And I say, listen, I need the taxi guy to take me back to the hotel. When I get to the hotel, I'll pay him. No issue. Because my cards are at the hotel. And he's like, no, you need, you're better off catching a train, to be honest. Because it's like a two-hour drive. So you, you, you're better off having a train. I'm like, no. I'm not, I can't get on the train. I won't be able to. I can't do it. You need to take me in the taxi. So he eventually agrees. We go back. I'm falling in and out of consciousness in the taxi and the sleep. And then we get there and it's almost, it's like, I'm thinking it's almost light. Get into the hotel room uh, and they're like, oh, where, where have you been? And I'm like, I know I've been out all night, but don't worry. I've got, I've got the room till 10 o'clock. And they're like, oh my, you know, where, 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 this is terrible. Where have you been? Where have you been? And I'm like, all right, don't worry about it. I've just been out all night. Let me get showered, sorted, and I'd be gone. No, you no, you can't shower. You can't shower your bags. And, and I'm thinking, listen, it's all right. Because I'm looking at my clock. I look at the, what is set is six o'clock. I'm like, I check out at 10. It's all right. My flight's about 12 or something. So I'm in the room. I'm grabbing all my stuff. And I'm thinking, right, okay, get sorted. And i got to go and pay the taxi driver, which was about 100 a, a quid, a couple, couple of thousand yen. I'm like, right, okay. Go to the door. And the manager stood at the door. And he's like... Where have you been? And I'm thinking, fucking hell, what, what, what is this? <laughs> I, you know, if I want to go somewhere, I'm 26. I'll go somewhere. And I, he said, it's six. He said, it's six o'clock. And I said, yeah, loads of time. No, 
It's six o'clock in the evening. It's six p.m., not six a.m. And I'm like, what? So it wasn't getting light; it was getting dark. And I, and I, I was like, it's, I'm like, it's twilight. It's getting light. I've got to go. No, it's getting dark. Uh, so you missed your flight. Head. Yeah, missed my flight. My head is fried now. I'm like, I, I don't know what's going on here. I've missed a day somewhere. Oh, <laughs> I've lost a day. So, uh, and then I rushed to the airport. I'm so like, taking this one and cutting it into two parts. <laughs> <laughs> so, I get get to the airport, and then they're like, oh, there's no more flights now. Let's go in the morning. I go back to the hotel room. I book, an, book it for another night, and they're all right. They're okay. And then I was violently ill all night, which is why I think I was spiked. Hot and cold sweat, shaking, oh, couldn't sleep. And it, do you know what? It's terrible. You're in a foreign country. And this was, but you know, we had no phones, no internet like that then on your phone mm. where you could just call yeah. my miss my, my, and say, I'm all right, this has happened. So that I've missed my flight. They don't know where I am. Mm. I can't contact them to tell them where I am. And I'm in a hotel room on my own, being sick and, and dizziness and shaking. They say it was quite scary. Yeah, I bet it was. But you got uh, yeah, your flight sorted it, out. Got it all sorted then, got to the airport. Um, and then it, my luck changed then. So mm. when I was at the airport, I'm like, look, I've had food poisoning. I've been quite ill, which is why I missed the plane yesterday. They were like, yeah, you'll have to transfer your flight now. And I was like, okay, when's the next available one? In two hours, BA's flight, there's one seat left on there, an aisle seat. I love it. Bang. Mm. So I had the last seat going out. It cost me 70 quid to transfer oh, wow. it. Yeah. So I was on, on the flight, fine, all sorted. Got a bit ill on the flight here and there. Mm-hmm. Got back, uh, obviously missed my connecting coach back to Wales. Mm-hmm. They were like, oh, you'll have to pay a transference fee. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, how much is that? One pound. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. So go back home, obviously managed to ring my then wife. And I was like, listen, I'm all right. You know, <laughs> what happened. Although I don't know, I could have been interfered with. I have no recollection of what went on. <laughs> So, so Rapongi was well, Rapongi was funny. There's a lot so of lived up to its reputation. So when we go to Rapongi, <laughs> we have we we'll have bottles that we keep our thumb over the top that's of the bottle, right, and right. we just slip it through a straw. <laughs> that's what we'll be doing. So wow, that's, my, that's, that's my that's, that's quite my the adventure. To, <laughs> that's my trips to Japan. Yeah, so the they're very juxtaposition go, though. Yeah, they're so the next time I, which was supposed to be this year, next time I go, I'm going out with money mm-hmm. so I can do what I want as an adult. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> and I can say, right, we're going here, we're going there, we're doing this, we're doing that. We're going to break it into humble. That's our next story. Yeah, I don't think we're going to need to break <laughs> in, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be good. Before we cut off too, I also noticed this entire thing. I was like, what is wrong with my video? Because I look really blurry. And I realize I can't yeah, in the room bit. in the dark. I forgot to turn the light on. I don't put the light on. <laughs> so that's what's it's trying we'll to suck to, light from here anyway. You'll have to bear with us, folks. Scott, yeah. you all up on this technology. You look at my background. Perfect. <laughs> Scott's not up on the technology at all. No, no, not at all. No. Okay, so as usual, guys, don't forget to subscribe to the Marshall Way Backstreet Karate real talk we need the subscriptions on the real talk put your comments in we're getting we're getting the views we see that there's hundreds and hundreds of views all the time lots of we're getting comments now too there is some good comments are good as well yeah we're we're getting good conversations yeah hit that subscribe though please yeah you've got to get it just opens our platform out and then allows us to do more things then yeah all right should we uh call it a wrap till the next one I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you do the cut. Cut. <laughs> <laughs>